Okay, folks. Um, well, good afternoon to you all. It might not be afternoon when you're watching this, but it is afternoon for me. Um, I'm just going to go quickly over the um, Max Dupain frame analysis that we looked at. And we looked at this image that's on the screen in front of you now um, called Newport, at Newport. And it was done in 1952, black and white. It's 40 by 45 centimetres. Now, all of these details that you see um, at the bottom of the screen here, um, these um, these details that you see here, is it going to let me? Um, all these details are oh, the wonders of modern technology. Will we be able to get our ink tool to work? Yes, we will. Okay, um, all these details here, they're very often useful for the um, structural frame. So things like um, the actual medium uh, tells you how it's made, and it's a silver gelatin photograph. So it's a black and white photograph using the process silver gelatin, which is an older way of um, making photographs. Um, but as you can see, it's a very... Um, contrasted image. We've got very dark shadows. You can see behind um, the bather here, we've got a very dark shadow and dark foreground. So there's a lot of um, contrast. And it's, um, it's, it's, so we would say it's high contrast, black and white, a bold image. And we know that from looking at our um, modernist versus pictorialism um, information, that this is a modernist image. Okay. And um, so we can also look at the size. Quite often the size is a telling thing, especially if you're looking at, a, you know, if the photograph was very large, it would have a very different impact. Because if you're in front of a large image, it's a very powerful thing. If you're in front of something that's medium size like this one, um, the thing you can talk about when, when you're talking about the size of an image being small is you can say it's an intimate image because you have to get a little bit closer to it to look at it. So it makes you get up close to it. So large, you can say it's powerful and it, um, you feel like you're being overwhelmed by it. Smaller, you might want to discuss that it's a more intimate image and it's a medium sized image. And for the subjective frame, it's asking you to type below how it makes you feel and what it reminds you of. Well, um, there won't be too many of you that haven't um, been to the beach on a hot sunny day. Um, so that would probably be one of the first things that comes to mind. Leisurely time spent at the beach, um, perhaps school holidays um, that you've um, been away uh, over, over on trips overseas, maybe to beachside places, all those sorts of things would be um, satisfactory things to discuss for the subjective frame with um, regards to how it makes you feel and what it reminds you of. Is the image a celebration of Australian life or a sad image? Well, some people were talking about the fact that black and white is quite often used um, to uh, create sadness in an image. Well, black, if a, an image is grey, um, you can say that it's a sad image. But, of course, back in the day, back in the 1950s even, we did start to see some colour happening in images. But um, still, there was a lot of um, hand colouring going on. Um, but black and white was pretty much the standard way of taking a photograph. So if you're talking about a modern photographer using black and white still to this day, you, it might be um, happening to create a particular mood. But if you're dealing with a photographer from um, earlier times, uh, especially from the 1950s back, you would probably not want to say that he was intentionally trying to make the image look sad. Um, it's, it's more about the fact that that's what's available to him. Um, but yeah, I, I would say that um, you, some people talked about isolation between the figures, that none of the figures were looking at each other. The, the lady over here in the pool, she's by herself. All these figures seem to be quite um, interested in themselves and introspective, not rather than having a conversation with each other, which is quite um, pertinent to what's going on at the moment, really, with the social distancing. Um, but yeah, some people did actually notice that as a... a uh, part of the image and that's definitely you could definitely bring that up and say that the image the people in the image are not interacting and so therefore it could be deemed to be less than happy um, or you could say that um, it's a celebration of the Australian bronzed Aussie the myth of the Australian bronzed Aussie um, 
all that sort of stuff. So either of those responses would be a, a good response, provided you um, support them with um, with your observations. So if you're going to talk about the um, the tanned bronze Aussie, you can say the figures are all looking fit and strong and young, and it's a celebration of that of those things. Um, if you wanted to talk about isolation, you could turn around and say that the figures are not interacting. So once again, two people can look at an image and get completely different feelings um, or observations from it. That's why it's called the subjective frame, because it's subjective. Um, it's down to your point of view rather than um, objective facts. Um, the structural frame um, is a good starting point. Uh, it says here quite often it's a good starting point for a structural frame analysis to look at the details. And we, I pointed those details out to you, the size, the medium, the title. So straight away, at Newport's telling you, well, it's at Newport. If you know where Newport is, it's on the northern beaches of Sydney. Um, some really beautiful beaches up on the northern beaches. Um, so what is the title, date, size, etc. of the image? Well, that's all available on the image, okay? Title's at Newport. Size is 40.4 by 45 centimetres. The medium is black and white photography on uh, silver gelatin print. So um, all that information is available for you there. And um, what is shown in the scene? So you just want to describe that it's um, young and uh, fit people um, in a seaside swimming pool on a sunny day. Um, you go into even more detail than that. You could say there's a figure standing in the foreground. The figures, there's two figures in the background that have their back to the viewer. And in profile, there's a, a female swimmer shown from the waist up. So, you know, you could you could go into more detail if you need to, but you're basically just observing what you're seeing in front of you. Um, what is the medium? We just discussed that. It's a silver gelatin black and white photograph. Describe the contrast and light in the image. Does it have strong contrast between light and shadow? Yes, you would say that this is a strongly contrasted image, and quite often that's an attribute of modernism. You can have a look at this image and you can see the dark shadows, and you've got quite strong highlights from the sun hitting the bodies and um, glinting off the, off the skin. So that is definitely um, strong contrast. Um, what, did we, what are other questions? Are there any signs and symbols? Remember that symbols do not have to be obvious. For instance, there are men, uh, more men than women in the image, and these men are all strong and athletic. What might this symbolize? Well, like I said, um, we have that whole um, myth that it's even prevalent to this day of the bronzed Aussie, um, obviously in recent times with the um, Sun Sense campaign and the understanding that it's not necessarily a good thing to be spending a lot of time in the sun, um, that's taken a bit of a bashing, but people still tend to um, see that as the quintessential um, Australian attribute, that strong athletic surfer slash surf lifesaver. Um, so you could say that um, those um, fit people in this image are symbolic of that myth, myth of the bronzed Aussie. Um, so that's one symbol. And you could also say that perhaps the fact that um, the woman is isolated and um, quite static and passive and the gentlemen are quite um, athletic in their poses, you could turn around and say that might be um, representing um, the relationship between men and women back in the 1950s. Um, uh, considering the fact that, although admittedly in the 1950s, women were starting to take more of an, an active role in um, in work matters, because it was post-World the uh, post -World War II when things did change a little bit. But we still had quite traditional uh, roles for men and women, and women did tend to stay home once they were married. So it was, it was quite different times. So you could discuss those issues too, and those issues would be relevant in the cultural frame as well. We were only dealing with um, the subjective and the structural frame for these questions. Um, and, oh, sorry, no, we did look at the cultural frame. Pardon me. The, the, the next one, we didn't look at the cultural frame. What does this image tell you about life in the northern beaches suburb of Newport? Is life pleasant, unpleasant? Give reasons. Um, so you could turn around and say, once again, for cultural frame, um, you know, that it's, it's about sunny days by the sea, um, that notion of the carefree, um, uh, times, etc., etc., and when you think about it, 1950s was post the World War II, and they were quite they were conservative times, but they were they were quite um, they were quite optimistic times because we've gotten through the war, 
and they were a time of um, economic boom, really, for a lot of countries, America, Australia, et cetera, et cetera. So um, optimism was the order of the day. You'd have to know a little bit about history to understand that, but I'm sure you've looked at history in post-World War II, and if you haven't, um, you might want to do a little bit of research. Um, so, yeah, optimistic times after the war, carefree, youthful um, times for people. Does the image tell you anything else about Australian society of this time? Well, like I was saying, you might be able to read into the image um, the relationship between men and women um, and the more active role that men were playing, perhaps in, a, in, 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 in the sense of being um, in the workforce more often. And women were more um, likely to be in a, in a homekeeping sort of role. Um, those roles have definitely evolved and changed over time. And, um, you know, you'll still see men and women in traditional roles, but certainly um, that's not always the case. And I can attest to that because um, I spent a lot of time um, doing domestic tasks <laughs> that perhaps my grandmother would have done back in the day. And, um, and we're all the better for it, I believe. Um, but please, by all means, let me know if you disagree, because this is all about discussions. Um, so that's basically how you do a frame analysis. Um, look at your answers, see what you came up with, make sure that your answers are well supported. And um, we might do another conversation about this um, for the other frame analysis that I did. Anyway, um, hope that's helpful. And um, we'll see you in the next video.